My Lords, I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper. My Lords, it is uh, Ofwat, the independent regulator and not the government, that assesses water companies' business plans and sets the overall price cap that each company may recover from its customers. As part of that process, Ofwat bal balances the interests of consumers with the ability for companies to fund their services. Companies are preparing their plans for 2025 to 2030, uh, which will be submitted to Ofwat in October 2023. Offwat will make final decisions on investment and bills by December 2024. My Lord, uh, the Minister sidestepped the issues here, so let me just lay down some facts for him. Uh, since the water companies were privatised, the water bills have soared by 40 per cent in real terms. Investment has declined by 17 per cent. £72 billion has been paid in dividends and another £15 billion possibly by the end of this decade. And now the companies are saying that they will make investment if they can increase water bills by another £100. I do hope that the Minister will exercise his considerable powers of persuasion and on the water industry and insist that shareholders fund the investment and not customers, because they have already been fleeced for the last 34 years. Yeah. I, I fear the noble Lord and I are working off uh, different um, facts. Uh, capital, investment, capital investment by water companies is 84 per cent higher than it was before the sector was privatised. I have seen evidence that it is in the independently assessed that water bills would have been higher if we had not uh, uh, privatised the industry. £190 billion has been spent by water companies paid for out of customers' bills for uh, investment in water. Uh, my noble friend Baroness Veer said earlier that nationalisation is a soundbite, not a solution. I couldn't agree with her more. Yeah. My Lords, I refer to my uh, register of interests, but I want to ask my noble friend a bit more about off what. The government is, is getting criticised a lot in relation to bills for water, but uh, have, am I not right in saying that the regulator, uh, looking at this matter in an independent fashion, has got pretty well the final say on who has to find the money for the developments that we're talking about. Uh, my noble friend is right to a point. The government gives direction to Ofwat, and it's given very clear direction uh, to Ofwat in terms of uh, resolving issues relating to uh, sewage overflows into rivers. Uh, and uh, we have a system where we have, like all utilities, which is extremely attractive, not least to pension companies, who are the recipients of, uh, of dividend payments, uh, for, who invest in our water industry. And having that balance between making sure we're getting the right, for, being fair to bill play, payers and how much they pay, but getting that investment is absolutely crucial. And that's why we work regularly with off what to achieve it. Yeah. Uh, my Lords, um, none of us uh, underestimate the complexity and magnitude of this problem. Uh, uh, we have had years of underinvestment in our sewage disposal and treatment uh, systems. Such is the size of the problem today that I think we must all accept that the strain will have to be taken by a combination of higher bills to the consumer, shareholders receiving smaller dividends, and I know that it's difficult for politicians to even contemplate this, I think general taxation, i.e. the Treasury, must also share its, uh, take a part in this burden. Uh, well, I thank the, the Noble Duke for, for, for his uh, continued interest in this issue. I, uh, the, the, undoubtedly, we, we could resolve the, the situation by spending somewhere between 120 billion and 600 billion, separating out clean water from dirty water, retrofitting an entirely new sewage system, uh, creating uh, an additional 40,000 Olympic swimming pool equivalents of storage. Uh, and that would cost around between 271 and 817 pounds per annum uh, on bills. It is really important that we are honest with customers, with people who are using water and getting water into their homes every day and getting, clean, uh, getting sewage taken out of their homes every day, that, that, there is, that it does come at a price. 
and uh, some, of the, some of the promises being made uh, to s that this is a simple solution are, are entirely fallacious. We have to be honest with uh, the uh, people who pay these bills. We customers have paid the water companies all the money that they needed to do their job properly. Now, their statutory duty was to build, operate and maintain sewage systems capable of effectively dealing with the contents of sewers. Now, we've paid the money for them to do that. The fact they're not doing it means that surely we're owed a refund rather than paying more bills. First of all, Noble Baroness suggests that there was no sewage going into rivers before water companies came along. Under investment, when they were privatised businesses, when they were, when they were nationalised businesses, was, uh, was historic levels of low investment. And there are, bathing waters were much worse than they are today. And I'm not saying for a moment that there are not serious problems. This government is, if I can steal a, a, a soundbite, tough on sewage in rivers, tough on the causes of sewage in rivers. Uh, but we want to be absolutely clear that everything, everything that happens comes at a price. We want companies to be able to pay pay out dividends, because that is what encourages companies to invest in our water sector. And so it's getting that balance absolutely right. Would it not be appropriate for executive bonuses to be linked to challenging reductions in pollution? Well, my noble friend makes a very good point. Water is the only utility business where the regulator does link uh, reward for company executives and dividend payments to performance. That is the, it is the only sector uh, of privatised utilities where that uh, link is made. Well, on sound bites, can I just say that I think levelling up is a bit of a sound bite rather than a solution. <laughs> but the National Infrastructure Commission has warned that there doesn't appear to be a comprehensive and consistent understanding of asset condition across the sector and also how this might change in the future. We know that asset replacement rates need to be significantly higher. So does the Noble Lord, the Minister, agree with the Commission that Ofwat should take a leadership role in developing consistent, forward-looking metrics for defining and measuring asset health across England? And if not, what does he consider the alternatives to achieve this? Uh, I, I actually do agree that uh, there is much more that we need to do to make sure that levelling... I do not agree that levelling up is the sound. <laughs> It's really happening. I, uh, I do agree that we need to make sure uh, that we are supporting water companies and through the regulator in making sure that they are taking a longer term view on this. Our, the, the, each price round is five years and the investment decisions we want them to take look way into the future uh, ahead of that. So we want to make sure that we are working with the industry to create a long term solution and that we are doing that so with customers in mind. And some of the promises being banded around about ending uh, all sewage outflows by 2030 really need to be challenged, and those making them really need to be challenged because that will have a very big impact on households who are struggling to pay other household bills at the moment. My Lords, the first three COEs of, COEs of water companies to waive this year bonus due to sewage, sewage pollution were Yorkshire Water, South West Water and Thames Water, followed by... Welsh Water and, lastly, Southern Water, a campaign waged both inside and outside this chamber to influence water companies does begin to have an effect. Does the Minister believe that the measures which have recently been announced by water companies are sufficient to dis achieve the desired outcome? I think the uh, Noel Baroness makes a good point because I think that the, uh, the activities within Parliament and outside it on this particular issue have really struck home. And people are de rightly demanding uh, that, dis that we take into account the impacts of development, of growing populations, and the health of our rivers. And it's not just water companies. It's agriculture. It's the uh, connections that we all make from our own sewers and septic tanks that are causing problems to our rivers. And so, yes, she's absolutely right. We need to make sure that we are tackling these things. And that it is right that the water companies are recognising that, and those four companies should be applauded for doing it. But we want to see much more investment from them, and that's what the government is driving. My Lords, water companies have borrowed £56 billion, even though investment has declined in real terms. Water bills include uh, about £80 to cover interest payments. However, 
Much of the debt is actually intra-group and is used to shift profits and dodge corporate tax. That much was acknowledged by Michael Gove in a speech on the 1st of March 2018. Can the Minister explain why the Government has failed to curb customer and tax abuses by water companies? I am concerned about making sure that water companies spend money on infrastructure that is needed to clean up our rivers and our environment. And what we have to ask ourselves is what is the best model of doing that? And one that encourages investment into this country from sovereign wealth funds, from other com- com- countries around the world, as well as pension funds and investment base here, is surely a good way of doing it. So the model is right. The alternative the alternative means that the water companies will have to sit outside the Chancellor of the Exchequer's uh, office in a queue behind the health service, the police, the, the, uh, the armed forces, and, and does she honestly believe, does she honestly believe that they, there will be more investment through that kind of system of public sector borrowing rather than getting this kind of investment flowing into our infrastructure? Yeah.